Hi, this video is part two of a three-part series. In part one, we solved the equations of motion for the double pendulum. And in this part, we would like to build a simulator that's capable of taking the angles as an input and rendering a graphic pendulum. If you have not yet seen the previous video, a link for that appears above. Please go and watch that first before proceeding to this one. All right, so the next part of this project, we need to convert this into an animation. And what I'm going to use for this is something called Pygame. And let's just start a new file here. I'll call this double pendulum.py. And for those of you who haven't used Pygame, this is not supposed to be a tutorial in Pygame, but it's a, it's a game engine used for 2D graphic arcade type games, I guess. And um, one of the things it allows you to do is draw to the screen, produce a canvas, a, a surface, and draw onto that. Um, so to get started, I'm just going to import Pygame. And then from Pygame dot locals I'm going to import everything whoops import from Pygames then from Pygames local import everything and now a lot of this is just a little bit of boilerplate stuff to set up a canvas and produce a screen so that's our first job we want to set something that has a width width and height of uh, 800 by 480. Um, let's just define some colors. White is 255, 255, 255. This is an RGB format. Black, of course, would be 000. Um, and why don't we do red and blue as well? And blue. where we can make the pendulum bobs different colors. Um, we want to define a screen or a screen surface. And the way we do that is Pygame display sets mode. And here we can put W comma H. Okay, so this says set up a screen that's uh, 800 by 480. Then we'll just fill the screen with white so the starting point would be a white screen pi game I, I think we want to uh, well the first thing we need to do is update it I guess uh, not screen it's display update and then I think we want to set up a clock why do we want to set up a clock because this will give us a steady frame rate in the animation pi game dot time dot clock Oh, it's a capital C, I believe. Okay, I don't know how many of you have experience at doing sort of animations or, or games, um, but typically what happens is the first thing you do is you form a game loop, which is just an infinite loop. So we say something like, wow, true, or you can say, wow, running, and let that variable running equal true, um, but wow, true. And then the first thing I want to be able to do is look for user events i want to see if someone wants to quit the program basically so if someone clicks in the little red x in the top left corner i want it to quit and the way we do that is for event in pi game event get so anytime there's an event it will be generated in this event object and what we can do is get it and if that particular event type is quit Then what we want to do is system exit, and I'll need to import sys up here in order to be able to use that. And then the last thing I want to do at the end of my game loop is I want to say clock tick at 60 frames a second. And we'll do another update, I guess. Pygame display update. And that's it. That should be the boilerplate for our loop just to be able to create a screen, a white screen. Let's run this for us to animate onto. And this is double pendulum. By the way, for those of you who are confused, this pip env run is in order to run the virtual environment so that I have access to my libraries. 
Oh, that's a typo. It's not set mode. Set mode. Set mode. There you go. So there's my Pi game window, and it runs until I hit this X button, at which point, boom, it quits. Okay, so the next step is to draw a pendulum. Now, again, going back to the way games are designed, typically within your game loop, there is an update step and there's a render step. Render. So, you know, it makes sense to have two functions for those. Def update and def render. Okay, and what would happen in your update function is it would actually calculate the position of your different objects and in the render it would draw it and then the screen would update each frame. Okay, so the way we're going to do this, I think, is let's just start off by, by assigning some parameters here, I think. And this, uh, some of the ones that we had in the previous exercise where we had some masses and uh, it doesn't have to be the same, just call them three and four. And the rods, we'll call those, I don't know, 1.5 and two. And let's just assume that each of the angles, A1 and A2 initially is just zero. 0, 0.0, I guess. Okay, and now what would the pendulum look like based on those angles? So the first thing that we'd need to do is we would need to update. And what we'd need to do with the update is we would need to pass angle one and two to the update function. And then what we would do is we would say that um, x1 is equal to L1 times sine of A1. And just check the diagram. It's uh, actually the x position is opposite the angle in the case of the pendulum. Um, and, you know, I think I want to scale this because we're now converting from meters to pixels. So let's just do this. Scale will be 100. And then this will be times 100. And we'll do the same thing for y1. y1 is equal to L1 times 100 times cosine of A1. Um, and similarly, x2 will be equal to x1 plus, these are just the positions of each of the bobs based on the angle. It's just kinematics, it's geometry at this point. You can go back to the original problem and have a look at it. But, um, and this is just sine again, but now sine of a2. So this is L2 times 100 times the sine of a2. And similarly for y2, it's equal to y1 plus L2 times, why did I say 100? I can just say scale. Same thing up here. Scale times cosine of A2. Okay. And then we want to return, we want to return those points. So x1, I'll do it as a tuple, x1, y1, x2, y2. So we return them as a tuple, x1, y1, and x2, y2. All right, and then when we call the update, we will catch it as, uh, oh, let's just call it point 0.1 and point 0.2 since we've done it as a tuple. All right, so send the angles, get back the points, and now we want to plot those. So we need point one and point two to render. Okay, and this is where the drawing comes in. How do we render it? Um, ooh, up here, I need to put A1 and A2 as my parameters. All right, and under render, it's point 0.1 and point 0.2 that I got. And pi game draw. Uh, draw circle. Um, let's make the first one red, shall we? And we'll say that's at x1, y1. X2, 
and what would the size of it be? Well, we've got a scale. Let's do a scale thing here again. Only this, I think I want to do it 10 times. Let me just write it out and I explain what I've had this mad idea to do. And this would be int of m1 times scale. So I recognize that my mass is only like 1.5. I want to scale it up a little bit. So I'm saying whatever the mass is, multiply it by 10 pixels and make that the diameter of the circle. All right, and then what I'd need to do is actually the first thing before drawing the circles, I should have drawn the line. That should go here, draw line. And I realize that I left out screen here. I've got to first say the surface I want to draw it to, then the color, then the coordinates, and then the diameter of the circle. So where I'm drawing the line, again, I want to have the screen. I want to say the line is black in this case. And I've got to say a from and a to. So let's just say it's 0, 0 to x1, y1. Okay, and then I'm just going to copy and paste this because this is basically the same thing I'm going to do again for the second. Only this is blue this time. It's m2. And this, instead of going from 0, goes from x1, y1 to x2, y2. And we can just put in a return here for good measure. All right, so let's run this and see what happens. A sign is not defined. Uh, and from math, whoops, math, import, sine, cosine, and pi. X1 is not defined. X1, Y1. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so where I passed in the points, I need to say that X1, Y1 is equal to points, points, 1, 0, comma, point, 1, 1. And similarly, X2, Y2 is point 0, because these are tuples. Okay, so I can just pluck off each individual element, and then that should be good. Picked an integer, got a float. All right, so I need to convert this to an integer. Details, details, details. I'm plotting these points. The points have to be integers. Let's try it again. Oh, I can see the problem. We need to offset this. Hmm. Let's put an offset here. Why don't we... It's the best way to do it. I think just here at the beginning we'll... Let's say it's halfway across the screen, so 400 across and maybe 50 down. All right, and then when I plot it, I'm going to say, first of all, when I calculate it, I need to add the offset. So over here, I need to add offset the x component, and here I need to add offset the Y component, and I don't need to add it here because this includes X1 and Y1, which already has it added. And then over here, when I plot it, instead of from 0, 0, it's going to go from, in fact, that I can just put offset, since that is a tuple. All right, let's try that now. Okay, so a few problems, namely uh, the second circle should be at x2, y2. And I want to make the lines a little bit thicker, and I can do this by adding a parameter here, which will be a weight. Weight of 5. Let's run it again. 
just a question of layering. I don't want this line to be in front of the red ball, so I will pluck or draw the lines first, and then I will draw the balls. And maybe for good measure, we'll put another black ball right in the center where that offset is. size of it will be, oh, I don't know, like eight. So, running it again. There you go. And there's the ball at the top. You can see what I did with that. All right, looks good. So what if we had a different angle? Let's try that. What if the initial angle was, say, what about pi by two? Would that make sense? Let's run that. Yeah, there you go. That does make sense. And one more time, what if that's pi by 4 and this is negative 1.0? We run that. There you go. So we can now animate any frame of this based on an angle that we feed into it. The only issue is that the angles are static right now. So what happens if we just, oh, just as an example down here in the game loop, I said that A0 plus equals 0 0.01, 0 0.1, and A2 minus equals 0 0.05. Now we should get a little bit of animation going on. Ooh, it's working, except... <laughs> I see what's happening. We want to paint the screen white. So every time it renders, the first thing that we actually want to do, I'm going to move this up. is here I want to say screen fill white and now let's run it one more time there you go it's perfect so the only thing that now needs to be done is we need to feed in the actual angles into the simulator all right pretty cool and we've got all of that from the previous little exercise that we did. So let's figure out now how to embed the two. Okay, so I think I'm going to cut off the second video at this point. And in the third video, we're going to put it all together. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found something useful in it. If you did, please go ahead and hit those like buttons so others can get to view it too. I hope to hear from you in the comments below, or else better still, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and remember to click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch up with you in the next video.